Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. We're talking about creativity, waking up your creative gifts. Last time I talked about how to recognize different forms of creativity and the three things that are necessary, the some level of expertise, flexible thinking, and motivation. So today I'm going to talk more about how to cultivate your creative interests and gifts. Now, before we get into today's episode, I want to invite you to leave me a voicemail to say how you have dropped some baggage. Now, the link I'm going to put in the show notes, you can leave me a 90-second message on how you dropped baggage based on maybe something you learned in the podcast or a prayer that we had in the podcast or some other bit of information or suggestion that you found useful. And then I plan on sharing this in a future segment where I include the messages that people have left. So if that's something you would like to do, I would love to hear from you. And let me know whether it's okay to share it. So let's talk about how to cultivate your creative gifts and interests. So I want to talk about the spiritual foundation for this, then some practical steps, and then some more uh, spiritual principles. So the foundation that I, I mentioned very briefly last time is God is creative, And we are created in his image, we're told in Genesis. So we have creative abilities just by the fact that we are created by God. They don't all look the same in different people. We talked about that last time. And some people are more creative than others. But most people have some amount of creativity that comes out in their hobbies or their interests or sometimes even their work. And as I mentioned last time at the end of the episode, that the Holy Spirit, manifestations of the Holy Spirit, one is as the spirit of wisdom, it says in Isaiah 11 too. And that spirit of wisdom is connected to creativity, problem solving, battle tactics, and clarifying the complex. So when when your life or your job or someone you love needs some wisdom. Many times, if you ask the Lord, he will give you a creative strategy. I ask him for simple strategies to solve problems. So this is connected to God's creativity and you being able to partner with God to create and solve and make things beautiful or make things peaceful depending on what the situation requires. So let me give you an example of that. A couple of weeks ago, I shared on Facebook something interesting that had that had transpired in just decorating a little piece of a bookshelf in my home office. I bought this decoration and it's designed to be in a flower pot. It It's... Um, beautiful. It's shiny. The leaves are gold. I I love things that shine, things that are have bling and little golden speckles. And just, it's just, to me, that is so eye-catching. 
But when I took it home, I wanted to use it just to decorate part of a bookshelf and lay it down as opposed to have it standing up in a vase. Well, it didn't look right when I laid it down. It was sprawling all over. And so over a period of a week or so, I started clipping some things that weren't laying right and then rearranging little leaves, little uh, decorations that were part of the arrangement and gluing them, moving them around a little bit so that it would lay down flat and that it would look more like a decoration for a mantle or a bookshelf and less like something I pulled out of a flower vase. So while I was doing it, I actually asked the Lord, how, how can I do this? I know I want it here, but how can I make it look how I want? And then I just thought, well, you just clip some parts off. <laughs> I mean, that seems so simple, but the Lord was speaking to me while I was doing it, that this is a lot of life, that there may be seasons or transitions where something that worked in one way at a different time of our life, that now something has to be adjusted and it's still beautiful, and but there can be some discomfort and some uncertainty on the path of creating that new form of beauty. So it looks pretty much the way I want it to now. It just took a little bit of effort. But the idea is that we all have different creative tendencies or gifts. And when we are willing to think outside the box, make some adjustments, try something new, that new things can come forth that are beautiful and that, that fit what you need for this chapter of your life. And I'm just going to mention that also when we are obedient to the Lord, as best we can, no one's going to be perfect. But when you're trying to live an obedient life where you're yielded to him, you're going to see more of his power, more answers to prayer, more creative ideas that glorify him, that will give you joy and carry God's presence, God's light to other people. It builds God's kingdom, even in these little things. So what are some practical ways? I touched on some of these in the last episode. I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth this time. So we talked about to be creative, you usually need some time. Things that are rushed, you're not going to have the freedom to kind of play with an idea or play with how something looks. You're just going to try to get it finished. So the creativity has the best chance to bloom when you're in an unhurried time with the minimum amount of distractions. That's when something good is bound to happen. So I talked last time about being willing to try something new. When I started my YouTube channel in 2019, I didn't even use my real name. It seems kind of funny now, but it was like, I do not know what I'm doing but I knew I needed to learn and I just took one step at a time. And eventually I started using my real name on everything. But to start with small steps and do what you need to do to be comfortable. But when we're willing to try new things, to just step out one little step, maybe get some input of how, you know, how other people did it that we can cultivate maybe some abilities we didn't even know we had. Another quality that the experts say is very useful in cultivating your creativity is curiosity. When we are interested in the things around us, how other people have done things, how something works, when we become curious and we want to learn things, then it's like there's more in the garden. So if your garden only grows daisies, then when you go to make a flower arrangement, probably the only flower that's going to be in there is a daisy. But when you have cultivated an interest in different kinds of flowers and different colors, then when you go to cr create your bouquet, you have lots of options of which colors, which flowers. There's just more room for more complexity, more options. 
So I'm not talking about doing things that are against your conscience, but just being curious about getting to know more about colors, more about photography, more about video, more about different apps that are out there. Over the last year, I have learned a lot (laughs) uh, about technical things that I had no interest in. But if I wanted to create the kind of podcast I want, I had to learn about how to create the lighting that is going to make watching a podcast or a video more pleasant for people so they'll stay interested. How to use um, the different types, the different types of cameras that a computer camera as opposed to a webcam, as opposed to the camera on your phone, that the quality varies. And then also how you coordinate the microphone. So these are different things I learned about. I was curious about the basics and then how to create the look and feel that I wanted so that I would be satisfied with the with what I offer other people. But all the things behind the scene that didn't work, those obviously I didn't share. But it was a process. And I just kept talking to myself through the process of, well, I'll learn how to do this. Now I know one more thing. Now I know one thing that doesn't work. Now I know something I'm not going to do again. Now, oh, this is easier. So it's trial and error. And if you're okay with that, you will be more creative. So I mentioned that your expertise, your knowledge base, as you expand your knowledge base, whether we're talking about woodworking or sewing or making greeting cards or scrapbooking, gardening, baking, the more information you know about that area, then when you go to put it together, you just have so many more options to draw from. And it's all these variations that make something beautiful, that make it interesting, that make it unique. Um, My daughter is really good with colors. And when she was growing up, she would put things together in color. It was like, and even in clothing, she would put things together for me. And it was like, wow, that's interesting. I wouldn't have done that myself, but it looks pretty good. So Our abilities and talents and gifts when we try new things, when we learn how other people do things, we can develop our own style and we can draw from the gifts of other people. And it's like momentum that I am a blessing to you. You are a blessing to me. And it just makes life more enjoyable. There's a lot of stress in life. And when we can enjoy those creative aspects and the gifts that God has given us, and the gifts that God has given other people. It just makes the journey so much more pleasant. Sometimes we have to look for those simple pleasures. A couple weeks ago when I did the episode with Java with Jen, partnering with God for your business, she said one of the ways that she knew what she wanted to do was think about what problems other people ask you to solve. If people frequently come to you with a certain kind of problem to solve, That means you're probably good at that and that people recognize you of having some skill in that area and there's room for creativity in any area. So I'm going to share a couple more ideas about the spiritual aspect of things. These are to encourage you and challenge you that whatever you're good at, whatever your creative abilities are, they are for your enjoyment but they also are part of fulfilling our purpose on earth to build the kingdom, to encourage other people. In Luke 19, verse 13, there's a, a parable where the owner, the, the boss, tells these individuals to occupy, to make use of the talents he gives them, minus, it was a dollar amount to make use of those while he was gone, and then he would come back. And so in our spiritual life, God has given us talents, spiritual talents, some maybe creative gifts, a variety of affection and time and talent. And so it is our job 
to also be a blessing to other people, to build God's kingdom, to make it easier for other people based on what we've learned, that it might be easier for them or make the the journey a little more enjoyable. Our gifts distinguish us. Recently, I was reading in the book of Daniel, and it said that Daniel had an excellent spirit. And what distinguished Daniel that made him so powerful, so effective, and so well-respected, although it also created enemies, was that he walked closely with the Lord, and the things that he did, he did with excellence, and he used creative problem-solving, and he got strategies from the Lord, and the Lord gave him dreams and visions to help him in the challenge of being in government in a very wicked culture. You don't even know how God might use something that to you might seem like something small, but you can bring enjoyment to other people. You can bring comfort to other people. You can glorify God and you're building your faith and your connection to the Lord and you're building the kingdom of God as you use your gifts and talents. So I'm going to leave you with the idea, the reminder that God created us to be fully alive, body, soul, and spirit. And part of what makes us fully alive is being able to be creative, to try new things, to cultivate recreational aspects of our personality. God took a day off the Sabbath. So working all the time isn't good for us. We need to have creative pleasures. We need to have recreation. We need to have leisure. And whatever creative abilities are in you can be cultivated and give you another source of joy as you are a source of joy to others. So let me pray for you. Lord, I pray that the things that we've talked about today and looked at the last few episodes whether it is creative problem solving or creative artistic ventures or business ventures or new ways to teach or parent or communicate, that you would bless this person, that they would know more of your creative power and your delight in them and your enjoyment of them as they engage in their creative interests and gifts. Lord, I just thank you for all the positive things that you are going to be helping people move into and enjoy and broaden their view of you as a God who created play. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you're getting something out of it. Please leave me a voicemail. There are 90 seconds of how you dropped some baggage. And I'll talk to you next time.